I have tried to get likes to validate my worth. I have tried to get men to love me to validate my worth. I have tried to do superior in school. I have tried to look a certain way. I've, you know, disordered eight my way through uh, college hoping and through my early 20s hoping that if I gain, if I lost a certain amount of weight, if I looked a certain way, that I would feel worthy. So I've tried all these things. It doesn't work. And I think maybe you have tried it too. And then we all have as women because we've all bought into the cultural narrative that you're broken, you need to be fixed. And here's the answer. And the answer is makeup, right? The answer is exercise or the answer is look a certain way or the answer is to look smart or be smart or do whatever. But actually, what's going to allow you to radically shift your sense of inadequacy is to do the healing on the inner wound. Hey everyone, I'm Thais Sky. Welcome to Reclaim, a podcast for women by women on conversations that matter. Hello, hello everybody. Thais Sky here. Welcome to Reclaim the Podcast. The Reclaiming Worth series is back. If you remember, last August, I put together a five-part series on navigating worthiness. I was talking a lot about worthiness in honor of my group program, Worthy Women Rise launch, and I wanted to share some things that I was thinking about on the podcast for you all. What I definitely did not expect was how much of you enjoyed the series. I got tremendous feedback that the series helped you understand your worthiness in a deeper, more meaningful way. And so when doors opened once more for Worthy Women Eyes, that's right now, this will be my sixth cohort. Um, and as I was contemplating how I wanted to do this launch, I knew I wanted to bring the series back to life. So here we are with part six of the Reclaiming Worth series. Now, I'm going to bring similar topics back up from the first five parts, but also I'm going on a little different route this time around. So you have two choices here. You can either pause this episode and go back and listen to the that five-part series, um, or you can just pick it up here and listen to these five episodes as a standalone and maybe then go back and listen to the first five. It's really up to you and how you want to make the most out of the information I'm going to share with you. And if you're wondering what this whole Worthy Women Rise group program is all about, well, Worthy Women Rise is a four-month healing sanctuary, a sacred container of magic where you're going to peel the layers of doubt and fears that have been paralyzing you so that you can reclaim your innate worthiness, embody your truth, and rise into your most expressed self. This journey is a coming of coming home journey where you're going to unlearn the damaging beliefs that are preventing you from being who you truly want to be in the world. I've poured my mastery into this program. This is a, a culmination of the most um, transformative tools that I've seen to work for me and countless lives of women all over the world in really tending to the space within them that tells them that they are inadequate, that they are not enough. And so if that voice is coming up within you, one, you're in a good place because this series is going to speak to that. And two, I invite you to consider joining us for Worthy Women Rise. Um, I'm accepting applications now. Doors are open until February 13th and we begin February 17th. So you can learn more about the program by going to Worthy Women Rise. Rise.com. You know, I've devoted my career to understanding the worthiness wound, so much so that I'm uh, almost uh, one year in my master's program where I've been getting my hands on some amazing research around worthiness, and it only proves what I've known to be true, that unworthiness is debilitating, debilitating. For some of us, our sense of unworthiness is a result of big capital T trauma. But for most of us, it's lower lower T trauma. It's the result of living in our culture where we're told that our worth is determined by our productivity, that our worth is determined by how we look, that our worth is determined by the identities that we play and how well we play to those identities based on other people's perception of us. Our worth is so much more than this. And yet, because our culture is so loud and has been programmed within us at such an early age, it's very easy for us to believe that voice to be true. 
So regardless of how that split happened between, you know, your true self and who you think you need to be, this, the result of the split is being, is the unworthiness wound, right? The worthiness wound, that sense of inadequacy. I believe that tending to the space within us is a feminist issue. Actually, you know, it's a human issue because our feelings of unworthiness is not our fault. But doing something about it lies within the realm of our power. This is our invitation. This is our call. It's time for us to recognize that on the one hand, feeling unworthy is normal. We all feel it on some degree anyway. And it's also not normal. Like when did we resign to the fact that we're just going to fucking feel unworthy for the rest of our lives? Like when have we decided that, you know what, this is just the way it is and I guess I'm just going to have to deal with it. There is something that can be done. It doesn't have to be the way it is for the rest of forever. And as I've been thinking a lot about the worthiness wound, you know, it's amazing the ways that we contort our lives in attempts to protect ourselves from facing our unworthiness. The ways that we show up or don't show up, the ways we push people away or refuse to let anyone leave, the ways we buy things, deny things, obscure things, run away from things. And the invitation is, what would it look like to stop? What would it look like to feel free? expansive, alive. And here's the thing, for many of us, it's really, really, really hard for us to believe that it can be true for us, right? We see other people have it, but that that can't be my experience. No, I'm stuck with this forever. Well, let me tell you that that's not the case. Healing is possible for all of us. None of us are a lost cause. Okay, it may look different than other people. It may feel different. It may not happen to the speed in which we want, but healing is possible for all of us. Now, I just want to say one thing that I know that a lot of times we talk about the opposite of the worthiness wound is feeling worthy, but I don't believe that to be the case. I believe that the opposite of the worthiness wound is sovereignty because we are innately worthy. We don't have to like take We don't have to become worthy, right? There's no amount of self-development work that we can do that's actually going to make us worthy because we are innately worthy, even though we have this worthiness wound within us. So it's not about cultivating worthiness. It's about holding space for the parts of us that don't feel worthy and listening to it. That's why I take a radically different approach to tending to our worthiness wound and in fact to all of self-development or inner healing or shadow work, whatever name you want to place it. My approach is really different because I believe the path to our worth is to let unworthiness show up for as long as it needs. It's not about fixing it because if we try to fix our unworthiness, we are perpetuating the idea that we are broken and need to be fixed. We are not broken. So if there's nothing that needs to be fixed here, what is the worthiness wound? Is that a problem? Is it something that needs to go away? No, it's wisdom. It's our gift. It actually is the, it's the way in. It's the invitation into something deeper. It is the, the journey of our unlearning. And it starts by admitting that we have this within us. I think a lot of times we get frustrated because we want it to be fast, right? We're in so much pain. We feel inadequate. We want this journey to happen quickly. But the fact of the matter is this work is not about speed because time one, if we're getting spiritual here, is an illusion. But two, you're not broken. So there's nothing that needs to be fixed quickly. So the process isn't about just fucking around with how much you make or how much you charge. It's not about mindset shifts or or being seen on social media or how many likes you get. Trust me, I've tried that. I have tried to get likes to validate my worth. I have tried to get men to love me to validate my worth. I have tried to do superior in school. I have tried to look a certain way. I've, you know, disordered eight my way through... Uh, college hoping and through my early 20s hoping that if I gain if I lost a certain amount of weight if I looked a certain way that I would feel worthy so I've tried all these things it doesn't work and I think maybe you have tried it too and then we all have as women because we've all bought into the cultural narrative that you're broken you need to be fixed and here's the answer and the answer is makeup right? The answer is exercise or the answer is look a certain way or the answer is to look smart or be smart or do whatever. 
But actually, what's going to allow you to radically shift your sense of inadequacy is to do the healing on the inner wound. And so there's a few ways that I've seen the worthiness wound really rise up, like the behaviors. I've connected the behavior to the worthiness wound pretty consistently, both in my research and in my one-on-one work with clients in the past, oh gosh, eight nine years that I've been doing this work. Um, So here's three kind of non-surprising ways. Like I think maybe it's easier also for you to connect the dots. One of them is comparitis, right? The sense of having to compare ourselves to other people. Yeah, sure, we can blame it on social media, but I don't think it's social media's fault. I think social media certainly exacerbates it. But I think the comparitis was a thing within all of us even before social media. And it's because we feel so broken, so defective that we're so searching for somebody else that's going to tell us the way. You know, somebody else is going to show us how to do it. And in that, we get so caught in comparing ourselves to others, measuring ourselves to others because we're still looking for other people to validate us. Here's another non-surprising way, perfectionism, right? This idea that if we're perfect, if we do things perfectly, then we'll feel worthy, then we'll feel complete, then we will feel like we can handle the challenges of the world. But, you know, perfectionism just keeps us really more paralyzed. It keeps us more stuck, which is great for the worthiness wound and our ego and our inner critic, because then we don't actually have to take any risks, And then the final kind of non-surprising way is becoming emotionally shut down or numbing ourselves out. And we do this through drugs and alcohol. We do this through TV, through social media, through, you know, Netflix, over-exercising, obsessive eating. There's so many ways that we emotionally shut down and numb out because when we're operating from a worthiness wound that tells us that we're inadequate, that tells us that we can't take up space in the world then that emotion, that reality of that truth is so unbearable that we can't tolerate it. And so what we do is we emotionally shut down. Okay. And so here are some surprising ways that I've connected the worthiness wound to our behavior. One, making ourselves bigger than we appear, like spending money that we don't have, lying on social media. Um, We do this because, again, we want other people to see us as bigger than we are. We hope that if they perceive us as bigger, that we will then become bigger. It doesn't work. Erratic defensiveness. This is when we're unable to receive any type of feedback. Ooh, because feedback goes directly into our damaging sense of self, right? If somebody gives us feedback in any way that's negative, then suddenly we fall into the spiral of, oh my God, see, I knew it. I knew I was broken. And so getting really defensive, not being able to accept feedback, not being able to be with the fragility of our ego um, is a way that the worthiness wound is at play. Another way is oversensitivity. Now, I work with sensitive women. I'm not pathologizing sensitivity, but oversensitivity is when we're so reactive, when we have no capacity of becoming resilient. Now, these are all um, symptoms, I guess I can put it, of the worthiness wound. So I'm not fault shaming. I'm not blaming anybody for doing this. I'm just pointing out that some of these behaviors aren't actually your fault, but they're defense mechanisms. There's ways that you're trying to prevent yourself from feeling inadequate, from feeling not enough. And oversensitivity is one of them. All right, next one, moral righteousness. I talk about rigidity a lot in Worthy Women Rise because I've seen so much connection between rigidity and our worthiness wound. In fact, tomorrow I'm going to be talking about boundaries and I'm going to be talking about rigid boundaries and why that's not the answer either. Um, But moral righteousness is the sense of like, I know the right way to live and anyone who does not live this way is wrong, is bad. Right. And it's again, it's like we're unable to um, expand our capacity to be with the discomfort that's of the non-black and white. Because if we allow any gray in, then we're going to start to question ourselves. And that's unacceptable because what we'll find is that we're broken. Okay, so moral righteousness, while is, you know, in many ways glamorized, um, in other ways it can be a defense. Next way, debilitating self-doubt. Maybe this should go on the non-surprising ways. But yeah, when we have a really big worthiness wound that we refuse to look at, how does that lead into our lives? It makes us doubt everything and it makes us doubt ourselves. Self-doubt is a result of lack of self-trust. And how can we trust ourselves if we believe that we're deeply broken, right? Obsessiveness over our looks. Um, We, of course, can 
look however way we want and play with that. It's part of our expression. It's part of our creativity. Um, there's nothing inherently wrong in makeup and clothes and accessories. It's a beautiful way that we express ourselves to the world. But if we are obsessed to the point where it's damaging other parts of our lives, that's something to look at. Another one is distrust of other women. We become distrustful of other women because we've been taught by our culture that, you know, everything is a competition, that we live in a hierarchical space and there's not enough space at the top for all of us. And so we don't trust ourselves. Well, then how can we trust that other women have our backs? Having to prove yourself to the world. Having to prove yourself to the world. That's a big one. How many of us have seen like the memes on social media or like, you know, I'm going to rise to the top because I want to be able to say fuck you to the people who didn't believe me in the beginning, right? And like, we're like, yeah, prove yourself. Prove to the world that you've got this. And we kind of celebrate that. But I actually think that that's very sad and painful that we're like searching our entire lives for ways that we can prove to other people that they weren't right about us. Like, what does it matter? Of course, it matters if we have a worthiness one that we're so desperately trying to ignore and placate and push down. Then, yeah, proving yourself to the world is really, really important. But if we can settle into the tenderness of our humanity, we don't need to prove ourselves. We can just be ourselves. And, you know, if, if that means that we end up, you know, better than ever, then that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, but it's not a, a matter of our worthiness. All right, next one, undercharging or questioning our value. So there, this comes with the whole thing about charging your worth, which I think is complete bullshit. There's no way you can charge your worth, just like there's no way you can like put a price tag on love, right? It's, it's the same type of thing. It's a non-secular. It doesn't make sense. But when we don't really recognize our worth, when we are feeling like we are broken and inadequate, well, it makes sense that we feel like we can't take up space in the world. We can't ask for what we want. And there, it, that's directly connected to undercharging or under um, getting underpaid, working hard, getting paid less, not asking for what we want from our boss, from our superior, from our, you know, our business, etc. Okay, and then the final one, because I know this is a lot, um, and there's so many more, but these are kind of like the big ones that I've seen. The final one is fear of slowing down. Now, I wrote a whole article that you can check out um, on my blog around um, the connection between productivity and our worth. And because we live in a capitalistic culture that really perpetuates this idea that our productivity is directly connected to our worth, it makes sense that when we're not productive, when we're slowing down, when we're nourishing ourselves, when we're trying to live in a pace that feels good for us, we directly um, rub up against the concept of like of worthiness and, and whether or not we are allowed to feel worthy and not be as productive as people want us to be. Um, and also the fear of slowing down. Slowing down um, can be scary for us and busyness is an addiction, right? Because we don't want to actually face what's really here, the feelings and the thoughts that are really here. And we try to run away from that. Okay. So maybe as I'm sharing this list with you, you start to recognize and see this may be your defense, that maybe you do have a worthiness wound that feels really uncomfortable to admit. And one of the things that we explore in depth in Worthy Women Rise is the concept of shame. Because shame tends to block a lot of us from even admitting that we are wounded in the first place. So another blog post that I wrote on my website um, called How to Be with the Shame of Realizing Our Worthiness Wound. All of these will be available in the show notes. Um, but in the blog post, I talk about how um, when we realize, oh my gosh, this stuff has been really limiting me. Well, that's really confronting. It's confronting to admit that we're believing in our inadequacy in ways that's really harming ourselves. And so shame steps in. Shame keeps us from getting curious because shame is so uncomfortable. It's a feeling that we are so ill-equipped to experience that we would rather do anything but feel the shame. And so I joke that shame is like a condom. <laughs> it's like a barrier. It prevents us from getting curious and going deeper. Um... And this is supported by society. We live in a society where, particularly Western culture, um, Eastern culture, there's a lot more nuanced conversations around shame. In fact, there's an episode I did um, at the very beginning of Reclaim with um, Rachel Rice and Carmen Spagnola, where we dive into sh shame and the different definitions of shame. Um, 
And so this is really a Western society is, is this idea that shame is bad. If you are being shamed, then you are bad. Um, um, the person that's shaming you is bad. We should not use shame ever. Shame is a bad tool. And I think this is also getting kind of public, uh, popularized by the work of Brene Brown. And I just want to add that while there's so much validity to that, and I 100% agree that shame is not an effective tool for our learning, shame in and of itself is just an emotion like everything else. And so if we shame shame, quote unquote, if we push away shame, then we're also pushing away the full spectrum of our humanity. And so it's not about not ever experiencing shame, but getting curious when shame comes up and being able to sit in the discomfort of why this is coming up. So uh, this is how shame plays out, right? When we're, we have this desire to do the deeper inner work, we're met with first societal resistance that says that addressing these broken parts of ourselves is wallowing in your negativity. It's feeling sorry for yourself and playing victim. It means that you're blaming other people. It means that you're focusing on the problem instead of the solution. It's a sign of weakness. Right? There's a lot of um, theor- uh, theoretical orientations, both in the coaching and therapy industries like CBT and mindset work that tells you that like there's no space for emotions. Emotions are just a repercussion of bad thoughts. Change those motherfucking thoughts and you won't have that bad emotion. And so what does that tell us when we do have a bad emotion? We point the arrow right back at us. We stop getting curious. We feed into our worthiness wound. Oh, well, see, I knew I was fucked. Right. And then that just leads us into a debilitating spiral. And so because we don't want to admit that we're broken and because societal uh, resistance tells us that we really shouldn't be focusing on doing this type of work, we say things to ourselves like this brokenness inside of me isn't that bad or other people have it so much worse than me or if I just work harder, it'll be fine or this will go away on its own if I just ignore it or no one else seems to have this issue. Clearly, I'm making a bigger deal than it is or maybe a new job. Ooh, more money. I know, having a child. Ooh, nope, getting married. Ooh, nope, buying a house. That's what's gonna make me feel worthy, right? So we fool ourselves into believing these lies which keeps us isolated and hurting. And here's the thing, women, we thrive in community, in seeing our hearts and holding one another, in sitting in circle and in leaning on each other. But being in community is dangerous to the patriarchy because there's a power in knowing we are not alone. And so healing the worthiness wound is a journey of not only dismantling the voice within us, trying to convince us often effectively that we are inadequate and insufficient and that we have to hide parts of us to be loved and accepted, but it's also, it's a tool that will inevitably and has to dismantle the patriarchy as well. Yeah. So healing the worthiness wound is a journey of untangling from the internalized narratives that culture placed on us on who we should be and how we should manage our pain. It's a journey of redefining womanhood, humanhood, sisterhood, feminine values, and integrate them with the masculine dominant skill set that we've learned over the years. So what we're doing here when we're tending to the worthiness, when we're talking about shame and we're talking about the places that are broken within us is that we're not blaming society. We're not playing victim, but rather we're taking an earnest look into the effects our culture has on our psyche and we're choosing to do the opposite of what we've been conditioned to do right? This is radical. This is radical. Look, you're deeply worthy. Whether you believe that or not, you are deeply worthy of your desires, of being the greatest version of yourself, of going after your dreams. Because our, your worthiness lies deep at the core of who you are. So by healing the sense of brokenness that lies there, you're offered tremendous amount of insight and wisdom. And that's where we want to get to, seeing the pain as wisdom. Okay. And so what do we do with the shame? As the shame comes up, the invitation is, can I hold this? Can I hold this? Can I see shame as an opportunity for me uh, as like a barrier, right? Can I see shame acting as a preventative measure? It's trying to protect me. Can I hold that? And then can I love that? And then can I go deeper than that? Can I recognize that The shame is not here to shut me down. It's an invitation to go deeper, right? It's an invitation to go deeper. 
And what happens is when we go to that deeper place, we no longer feel the compulsive need to people please and play the good girl. We can drop the masks that hide our true hearts. And most importantly, we can begin to feel safe and belonging to ourselves and our bodies. Our voice, our power, our solidarity with one another depends on this work. And that means an active participation on your part. Feeling worthy goes directly against everything our culture tells us is possible, which means if you want to develop worthiness, it's not going to just happen. It requires your participation. Okay, so I'm going to leave with you an inquiry, something for you to be thinking about, something for you to be meditating on. And that's the question of who are you before you were convinced it wasn't good enough? Who were you before you were convinced it wasn't good enough? What did that feel like in your body and in your life? I do have a Worthy Women Rise meditation that I make available for those on my Patreon. So you can join Patreon for just a dollar and then you can get that meditation. Um, and it will help you get to the root of this question. It will help you um, settle into what it means to feel worthy, to tap into the space within you that is already worthy. Okay. I'm excited to be going on this journey with you for the next five days. I love, love, love going deep and um, exploring these concepts in a way that's not really talked about out there. So thanks for being on this journey with me. I adore you. I appreciate you so, so much. I would love to hear how this resonated with you. If you have any questions, what came up. So you can do that um, by going on Instagram. I'm really on Instagram right now. You can find me at I am Tay Sky or just use the hashtag reclaim the podcast. Um, and I'll definitely check out anything that you have to share. And of course, if this resonates with you in any way, please share it with your community. There is power in numbers. There's power in having more people hear this stuff. Um, I deeply believe this is the way that we create revolution right is by sharing what feels good for us what we know is elevating us to the next level do not hold out on one another we need each other um, and so you can share again by using the hashtag reclaim the podcast and don't forget to go to the show notes um, to get the link to the first five part of the series um, you can also go to the show notes to get the links to the articles you can also go to the show notes to learn more about worthy women rise the group program doors close february 13th I will be back with you tomorrow for part seven of the Reclaiming Worth series. Mm-hmm.